I owe libraries so much. Um, I started reading at libraries. Of course, when I was little, I would get a huge garbage bag and take home an entire plastic bag full of books. And I also owe libraries for my newest novel because um, I wrote about the orphan trains. And I wouldn't have known about that whole historical era if it hadn't been for, um, I guess, five or six years ago, I walked into my library and there was a huge display um, informing me about the orphan trains. And it was such an interesting uh, poster board, triptych, <laughs> educational thing. That, so I went home and read about it and it actually found its way into my newest novel. I probably check out, uh, between me and my young daughter, I probably check out 250 library books a year, easily. Um, I use it to research for my novel. I use it for pleasure reading. I use it for coming up with new ideas of kinds of things I want to write about. And I'm so grateful for libraries and librarians. I do, the Lawrence Public Library in Lawrence, Kansas. Um, I would have to say Linda, who is the public, she's the children's librarian, and she is so kind and warm to um, young readers and encouraging them to read all the time, and at the same time she stays very current with adult contemporary fiction. I feel terrible about library budget cuts. Um, I'm proud that in my town we all just got together and voted for improvements on our library, and it was a very contentious battle, because as we know, everybody's under budget pressures right now. But the community as a whole, we really voted to sustain our library, and I'm so glad we did. Um, I think they're the heart of the community, and I, I, they really are. They are the heart of the community. It's so important to have one, you know, as a, as a physical space where people can come and, and read about books. And it's not about commerce. It's not about buying and selling. It's a place of sharing knowledge and ideas, and I think they're essential for community. You know, I think there's this, for people who don't know librarians, they sort of think, oh, a librarian is this very sort of conservative stuffy woman, you know, who sits alone in a... And they're actually these radical people who fight hard against banning books and will not bet, you know, and they are on the forefront of making sure books don't get banned. And I think that's amazing, and they're politically active about it, and I think that's wonderful, and I respect the hard work that they do. My latest project, <laughs> After the Chaperone or The Chaperone? The new book that just came out. Um, as I said, I was walking into my Lawrence Public Library and I saw this display about orphan trains, so that figures into the book. But the other thing is I was browsing in a bookstore and I came across a biography of Louise Brooks, the 1920s film star, and I was reading about her and I realized she grew up in Wichita, Kansas, and um, she was beautiful, smart, she was arrogant, condescending, witty, funny, mean, <laughs> um, self-destructive, brilliant. And she was all these things even when she was 15. And then I read that when she was 15, she got into the Denishon Dance School. And she, um, she was allowed to go to New York City for the summer, but she had to bring along a chaperone. And in her biography, it doesn't say much about the chaperone. She sort of lost the history while Louise Brooks became one of the most famous actresses of the 20s. Um, and I thought, wow, that would have been so interesting to watch someone try to chaperone Louise Brooks. So I invented this entire history for Cor Carlisle, my invented chaperone, and she and Louise Brooks go to New York City together in the summer of 1922.